All right, welcome guys. Today I wanted to talk just a little bit about the large intestine. It's the only part of the digestive system that we haven't really had a chance to talk about yet. So um, after food passes through the small intestine, most of the nutrients have been absorbed, okay? And what's left over is some unused food particles, some salts that kind of escaped out of the small intestine in addition to um, undigestible foods and water. And the job of the large intestine, the main job, is for it to absorb all that water that made it through the digestive system. Okay, so just to give you some perspective, if 500 milliliters of stuff enters into the large intestine, only about 150 milliliters of stuff is going to come out of your rear end, so or the anus. So that means that about 450 milliliters of that stuff is reabsorbed, meaning mostly water, reabsorbed back into the body. All right. So main job of the small intestine or the large intestine, reabsorb fluid. Um, it also is going to house a whole bunch of bacteria, which we're learning has a huge role in our health. And um, in fact, there's about a couple pounds of bacteria that live in your large intestine. There's more bacterial cells that live in your large intestine than there are cells in your body. And we're learning that not only do these bacterial cells allow us to absorb some nutrients that the bacteria produce, things like vitamin K, some versions of vitamin B, but these bacteria play a huge role in our immune health, so our ability to fight infections and diseases, and even our kind of the behavior of our nervous system. So our personality, our mood can all be influenced by these gut bacteria, and we'll talk about that um, a little bit more uh, later. Okay. So just to give you an idea of what's going on here with the digestive system, over here would be like a pulled out view of a person's abdomen, okay? So here, kind of in this dark kind of pencil color is a pulled out profile of someone's abdomen or torso. Okay, so here is a torso. And this large intestine is gonna be situated right here. It's gonna connect to the small intestine right about there. First part of the large intestine is called the cecum. That is gonna give way to the ascending colon, which comes up the right side of the body. Then the transverse colon goes around, right about up there, right underneath the rib cage. The transverse colon goes across. The descending colon goes down along the left side of the body, which then gives way to the sigmoid colon, which finally emerges, to, emerges into the rectum, which goes to the anus. Okay, so that's kind of the position of all these pieces of the large intestine. I'm going to kind of redraw everything over here. So imagine if I redrew things over on this side. I'm going to draw it in Sharpie. Here you're going to have the cecum, which is a large kind of pocket. It's the first pocket of the large intestine. The cecum connects directly to the small intestine. So this would be the last part of the small intestine, which is called the ilium. It connects to the cecum, which is right here, through a little sphincter called the ileocecal valve. Um, let me label that, all right? So here is the ilium, right there. This little connection between the ilium and the cecum, which is right here, that's the cecum. This is gonna be the ileocecal valve, ileocecal valve, which is right there, okay? It's a good way to remember kind of the order of all these parts of the intestine. And if you remember ileocecal valve, you'll remember that the ileum is the last part of the small intestine and the cecum is the first part of the large intestine, okay? Then um, an, a little outcropping of the cecum is going to be this little, I don't know, finger-like extension called the appendix, right? So that's where your appendix is. It's kind of on the lower kind of right-hand side of your abdomen. This is the 
appendix right there. Appendix contains um, some immune cells, some um, lymphocytes, which help to protect the body against nasty bacteria that might have entered into our digestive tract. If this guy becomes overwhelmed or clogged, overwhelmed with bacteria or clogged, that causes appendicitis, which is acute inflammation of the appendix. It can be really, really dangerous because if this guy bursts due to severe inflammation, you get all this nasty bacteria and feces that are released into the abdominal cavity, can be fatal. Um, the fix for this is they'll remove the appendix, and that's the kind of the um, accepted treatment for that. All right. So now we're going to have the ascending colon, which comes up. Okay, the ascending colon kind of looks like this. That gives way to the transverse colon, which kind of goes across. All right, kind of like this. Right. And then the descending colon is going to kind of come down. The descending colon is then going to give way to the sigmoid colon, which kind of has this S shape, goes right up in front of the sacrum. And then the sigmoid colon gives way to the anus, which looks, which uh, um, comes down here. And then that is uh, the rectum, excuse me, which then connects to the anus. Okay. So let me label all this stuff. This is the ascending colon. here, transverse colon here, transverse, can't write, colon is there, we're going to have the descending colon here, descending colon right here, the sigmoid colon is right in here, kind of like this whole area right here. And then the rectum. All right, perfect. And then that finally gives way to the anus, which is right there, okay? So that's good. Tyler, Tyler, shh, all right? So then what do we need to talk about? So here's what happens. We have all of this undigested food material, things like fiber, which are just carbohydrates that we can't digest. We always talk about fiber, right? Fiber being good for your diet. Well, here's why fiber is good. Fiber are proteins that we can't digest. Beans contain a lot of these, right? Well, those are going to enter into the colon, and they provide a place for bacteria to live. All these good gut bacteria that live in our gut, they need a place to live. They also need food, and they love to eat fiber themselves. So these gut bacteria are going to be really happy eating all this fiber, and they're going to do some really beneficial things to our body. They're going to boost our immune system. They're going to produce a bunch of vitamins that we can't produce on our own, and um, that's a good thing. In addition, it's going to allow the food in the colon to kind of move through each part a lot more effective, effect, effectively, right? Without a high fiber diet, it's common for food to kind of get stuck in these different regions of the colon, which causes constipation, all right? Now, um, the job of the ascending and the transverse colon, these guys are going to undergo peristalsis, which propel that food throughout um, kind of this track, you know? It propels it into the descending colon. At the same time, they're going to be undergoing segmentation, which kind of helps to mix up those food particles so that the large intestine can better absorb mostly water, right, but also those uh, vitamins that were, were produced, okay? So then food kind of gets mixed up and moved along these different parts of the large intestine. When they reach the sigmoid colon, that's going to stimulate the brain. It's going to stimulate a reflex. Right, so as the sigmoid colon spills up with feces, which is the what's left over after the large intestines absorbed all the water it can, it's going to send a signal to the spinal cord, which is then going to send another signal down to the sigmoid colon and the rectum, causing it to contract. Okay, that's going to push all this stool down towards the anus. Now, when we get down to the anus, there's actually two sphincters. Okay, so if we were to redraw kind of the anus right down here, let's redraw them right here. So here's the inside of the anus. We're going to find that there's two different types of sphincters. There's an internal sphincter, all right? This internal sphincter kind of wraps around like this. This guy is made up of smooth muscle. And when the sigmoid colon fills up, he automatically relaxes. 
and that's going to promote everything to come out. However, there's another sphincter called the external sphincter, which is out here. Okay, and so imagine this is another sphincter. Let me draw them in a different color, actually. So like maybe a lighter red. This external sphincter over here, this guy is made up of skeletal muscle. We can consciously control when he relaxes. If it's not a convenient time to go to the bathroom, we don't relax that sphincter, right? But if you can find a bathroom, you do relax that sphincter. And that's kind of how we control when we go to the bathroom. Babies just don't have control over this external um, sphincter on the outside, and that's why they just go whenever they have the urge, right? Okay, so that's a pretty good overview of kind of how the um, large intestine works. A little bit more about um, this gut bacteria. So we have all these gut bacteria in our gut. There's been some recent studies on mice to show the importance of really what's going on here. There's one study on mice that found there's a population of mice. Some of them had a large diversity of gut bacteria in their colons. Some of them had a small diversity. Well, the mice that had a lot of different gut bacteria, they seemed to be healthier and more active and leaner. Whereas the gut bacteria that had a lower concentration, or the, the mice that had a lower concentration of um, gut bacteria, they seemed to be a little bit lazier and um, heavier. Well, when you took the gut bacteria from a lazy mouse, put it into a healthy mouse, that healthy mouse got lazy and gained weight. And vice versa, if you took the gut bacteria from a healthy mouse, put it into a lazy mouse, that lazy mouse um, started to lose weight, okay? There's been other studies that have shown that um, a low diversity of gut bacteria can be associated with um, um, conditions like uh, C. diff, Clostridium difficile, which is a really nasty strain of bacteria which causes uh, diarrhea, right? So a little bit of diarrhea um, before we get into that. Diarrhea is when the colon just empties its contents without absorbing the water that it needs to. So this is going to cause us to lose a lot of fluid. Now the benefits of this is the colon's trying to flush out some bad stuff that might be in the gut. Um, but it's going to lead to really dramatic um, dehydration and an imbalance of fluids as we lose all that extra fluid and the extra salts that the colon might have um, absorbed. Okay, So C. diff causes this. It's a, it's a very bad thing. Now, um, C. diff is caused when there's not a lot of healthy bacteria in the gut and that C. diff uh, bacteria kind of goes crazy. Um, the treatment for this recently has been a stool, has been um, a fecal transplant. That's where they take the feces or the poop from a healthy person and put it into the colon of someone suffering from C. diff. What's crazy is that that has been shown to cure C. diff in 95% of patients within three days. So it's it's pretty a dramatic and effective um, treatment. Okay. So um, there's a lot to be kind of learned about the, the bacteria in the gut. Um, if you take an antibiotic that's really strong, make sure you supplement that antibiotic with probiotics, which are really just gut bacteria that help to build up um, the, the, the microbe, kind of all the, all the different um, my, uh, microbiota that live in the, the gut, all right? So that's a pretty good overview. Um, Yep, good deal. Thanks.